AC Unity is an interesting game, because whenever you bring it up, inevitably there will be people who say how much they enjoy just wandering around the open world. And as someone who's now done a fair bit of that for stress relief and for video purposes, I've done some thinking as to why. It's because the amount of options that Arno has access to when approaching something like a red chest, guarded by two to three extremists, that's significantly greater than the array of possibilities most AC protagonists get when they're moving toward an objective, even in something as meaningless as a treasure chest, guarded by a scattering of enemies, Unity offers the player a degree of ownership and responsibility over their experience that many of the other Assassin's Creed games just don't. This, combined with the wheelless tool select that Black Flag brought to the AC franchise, means all of your options are at the tips of your fingers, always, and available in the blink of an eye if your fingers are fast enough and your mind knows which item it seeks. This is especially true on PC, when you can just hit the number on top of your keyboard corresponding to whatever item you want. No scrolling through multiple D-pad taps here, just a single touch of 4 brings your smoke bombs into the palm of your hand. And likewise, a tap of 2 prepares Arno to fire a berserk blade into any lonesome guard that's eyeballing him a little too menacingly. Unity has more problems than any other game in this franchise, to this day. Ask a bunch of different people, and you'll get different answers as to whether the game is fixed or not. For some people, performance issues remain on all systems, Xbox, PS4, PC, whatever, they're still there. For others, bugs are still very much alive, same thing. And for others, still, those things were never really their concern, but rather the problems inherent to the game that can never, ever be repaired and we just have to live with. As someone who struggled just to find a way to eventually appreciate this game for all the dim light I saw deep down in its broken shell, I can't look away from those problems, but as the person who did learn to appreciate it, scars and all, I have to make note of its positives. You hear that? You feel it? That's called character development. The way AC Unity encourages the player to combine tools, letting you equip two items at once and assigning them to two separate buttons is downright cool, considering the different combinations that something as simple as Phantom and Cherry or Smoke and Gun can yield. It's insane. Advanced techniques are present here, like Berserk stunning a guard to lock him down while you focus on chaining into quick kills, or using Red SSI trick to lure people to your position, which is now marked precisely for you with a hologram to make it even easier, or putting smoke on yourself and sighting hostiles through eagle vision to scratch them out with projectiles. And these are just the flashiest of flashy tricks. There are others which are much more mundane, much more boring, but nonetheless important to having a good experience, and things that the game never teaches even though it should. Things that most players probably don't even know about. Things like knowing a cherry bomb will only ever work if a guard can see where it impacts when he turns to look at it. Like understanding that a tap of the run button sideways will have Arno smoothly exit cover without causing you to tear your hair out. We shouldn't have to learn all of these things just to begin having as much fun with this game as a player would have in a game that teaches itself more adequately. We do have to learn them, and we do have to teach them, but we shouldn't have to, and that's okay to accept, okay to talk about, and it's a good lesson for Ubisoft to have learned. Unity is at its absolute best when it evokes a certain feeling. When a player can say and truly mean, as an agent of the Assassin Brotherhood, my awareness of my surroundings borders on superhuman, and I have a response to every possible situation. This feeling of player ownership, of responsibility over your gameplay, of being accountable for your successes and failures, this is why people love Unity the way they do. And it is exactly why people hate gunners in this game, especially when they mix themselves into a combat encounter. Gunners are the quintessential example of everything that's wrong with this game. There is no response to this situation. Here, there is no right answer other than make sure you just have at least one smoke bomb on you. This tastes bad, because in a game where you have multiple answers to any scenario, here you have barely one. And that's because there were no mechanics inherent to Arno's moveset as a character and actions that have been built to address it. You can't dodge gunshots indefinitely, 
One will hit you and open you up to further damage and unavoidable panic. You can't fight when gunners are active because they will constantly interrupt your attempts at damaging your actual opponents. You can't run away because they will hit you in the back and there's no way to dodge gunfire or duck down in a chase. You can't climb a building because you will be shot off, and catch ledge doesn't exist anymore. In previous games, you can re-grab a building when someone tosses a rock at you. That was part of that skill's function in AC1 and other games. In Assassin's Creed Unity, the ability itself does not even exist in any substantial form. Sometimes you'll get a purely contextual catch ledge the game titles a breakfall, but it's so rare and so impractical it's not worth talking about beyond this and I do not even have any footage of it. You can't run through crowds because gunmen won't hesitate. They will teleport their bullets directly into your back no matter how many civilians are between you and them. You see what I'm getting at? Gunners cross out all of a player's options that don't involve using an item. Gunners negate Assassin's Creed's core gameplay in a frightfully oppressive manner. They cannot be overcome with combat, they cannot be overcome with navigation, and they cannot be overcome with evasion through social stealth. They delete every single attempt at the player using Assassin's Creed's fabled three core pillars. It is not at all a wonder that even people who consistently say Assassin's Creed Unity is my favorite game in the franchise also all unanimously say F Gunners. On the opposite of that spectrum is when Ardo and the player are in complete control, when they're genuinely responsible for their circumstances. The more you learn about the game's little idiosyncrasies and the stupid little tricks you can do to make it easier for yourself, the more fun AC Unity gets, because you're now able to actually play it instead of feeling powerless. There is no worse feeling in a game than feeling out of control, feeling like you're not responsible for what's happening to you. Ever wonder why people get toxic in team-based games like League of Legends, Dota, or Overwatch? It's because of that. Because they feel like they're not responsible for their experience. Feeling like there's simply nothing you can do. And the trait of Assassin's Creed Unity is that players who have a healthy dislike of it pick up on most acutely is exactly that. That until you inject hundreds of hours into it, or get taught by people who share info freely, like myself and a few other notable Unity players, well... Well, ACU is like the stealth game equivalent of getting ruthlessly comboed against a wall in a fighting game with no way out no matter how hard you try. That's what it feels like. That's why people dislike it. And they're not wrong to do so. There's so much this game never bothers to explain that makes it so much better, so much more enjoyable, but beyond that makes it more playable on a level of basic competence that other games just do not struggle with. You want to talk about challenging games, hard games? Dark Souls and Bloodborne are way more accessible than AC Unity because yes, they may hold a player to high standards, but they teach and show them exactly what they can do. And the designers of those games are masters at smooth escalation you know, barring difficulty spikes in boss fights. If I could travel in time, I would go back to before Unity's release and do two key things. One, delay it until it was genuinely ready for launch and polished. And two, create video guides on every bit of advanced tech we know now. Make them easy to chew, learn, and absorb. Release them for everyone, drumming up as much attention as possible around them and getting people to share them with each other if they were frustrated with some element of this game. None of this would solve problems with Unity's story, like having its second major character absent for about half of its runtime, or making its present day not only threadbare and empty, but also a complete waste of time. One or the other would have been accepted to at least some degree, but not both. But these actions would have helped many players enjoy themselves much more. I can still contribute this way right now, by making tips, guides, or stylish playthroughs that inspire for both Unity and Origins, but at this point in time, there aren't going to be masses of players still playing Unity, or even masses of players still playing Origins. Some concepts are transferable, yes, so the guides will be somewhat applicable to Odyssey, and they're still worth making for that reason alone, but it's a missed window of opportunity to help people enjoy these games more. And this is only partly my doing. See. This is a window that's way tighter than that of some other franchises because they don't release every year. 
the most recent game they release stays relevant for a longer time, which allows its community and its fanbase to rally together and make discoveries on these existing games stay meaningful and stay relevant to a huge percentage of the community for longer. In a weird way, this delay between releases can give those franchises a certain kind of staying power that Ubisoft trades away for a different kind. That of constant mainstream relevance, a consistent injection of hooded rogues stabbing people nearly every year. While I normally really appreciate the fast release timings of these games, as they're nice to have for a narrative that's as fragmented and episodic as AC's present day and Isu story, I think this may be my least favorite effect of the overly fast release schedules. Games don't live long enough for all of their players to figure them out. Good games don't get their chance to shine as bright as they can, and bad games are often left behind without a unified community recognizing their positives, because people don't have so much reason to explore them so fully when the next historical adventure is just around the corner. And they really should, shouldn't they? Ubisoft can become better at teaching advanced concepts in their games, as well as braver about including them if they do so. And if they don't want to do that, then supporting the Assassin's Creed brand in other ways than releasing a massive game every 365 days is another possibility. Supporting a living game with updates, patches, content, and expansions is an avenue they've surely already thought of, considering every single one of their other games already works this way, and in this case, if done in a conscious manner and with these concepts in mind, this can benefit Assassin's Creed and its players like little else.